It's that time of the year again and we have a new Fedora ready to blow our minds. Fedora 39 is geared for a massive update as this time we are getting a refreshed new desktop, a new engine under the hood, performance refinements and a lot more. Fedora is very special because it's a mainstream Linux distro used by millions of people and at the same time, it's one of the biggest innovators we have. Fedora is an open source champion that challenges the status quo and dares to redefine what desktop Linux experience means. Thus, it brings many new things with every new release. And this is exactly what makes every new version of Fedora mind-blowingly exciting. I've been playing around with Fedora 39 and I'm really excited to bring it to you. So let's jump right in and crack this countdown. Having a good knowledge of Linux commands and being comfortable using the terminal really broadens what you can do with Linux and what kind of experience you are going to get here. So if you are interested in leveling up your Linux game, definitely check out my course Linux Mastery Express which is the fastest way to learn Linux and start using Linux like a pro. I'll teach you a set of commands that will give you the confidence to use Linux without even a graphical user interface. Then we'll dive deep and learn how to use the vEditor and master shell scripting with real life examples. After teaching more than 100 students in person, I've curated this course with the top things that will develop your Linux skills the fastest. So if you're feeling like your Linux game is stuck in the same spot for too long and you're ready to take your Linux skills to the next level quickly, check out the link in the description below and get your Linux Mastery Express. We are running a massive 45% discount right now, so make use of it. Fedora 39 features the all new GNOME 45. GNOME 45 is the newest in the series and is the culmination of development of GNOME 40 series yet. GNOME Desktop is seeing very rapid development and the polish, the premiumness that we are seeing here is outwardly. GNOME 45 brings many polishing touches in the visual department and this time, special attention has been paid to improve the performance of the system, particularly with how GNOME handles search. GNOME 45 gives us a completely redesigned workspaces indicator. The old activities button on the top left corner has been replaced with this dynamic animated button now. Using this is very similar to the old activities button. Click on it to open the activities overview and now you can scroll on it to switch between workspaces directly. The scrolling mechanism really makes it easy to navigate between your workspaces and just get work done faster. Then the added benefit here is that you'll be aware of which workspace you are currently using. I like this change. It's visually appealing and also has informative functionality. I mean, tell me you haven't gotten lost in your workspaces. Many desktops like XFC do have indicators to let you know which workspace you are currently working in. Now GNOME has one too and it looks apt there as well. But yeah, this can be quite confusing to Linux newcomers. If I was a Linux newcomer, I would have a hard time understanding what icon that is and what it does. It doesn't give out a tooltip on hovering on it as well. But I think once people start using it, it'll start becoming normal. But yeah, switching between workspaces has become massively quicker now and you'll always have that spatial awareness of which workspace you're in. GNOME 45 comes with improved performance, especially the search. While I never had any complaints with the speed of search in GNOME, it was never exceptional as well. What I'm trying to say is, you had to wait. This time, GNOME developers were like, ain't nobody got time for this. Life being short and all, so they are giving us a faster search. Searching for apps, settings, files has gotten smoother and quicker now. Search is also more efficient across app searches as well as system search. Fedora 39 comes included with GNOME's brand new image viewer. A cleaner, simpler image viewer replaces GNOME's old image viewer. This new image viewer is laptop friendly with great support for touchpad gestures. Two finger pinches to zoom, two finger swipes to move back and forward and even two finger moves to rotate the image. It's all there. You can also select multiple images from the file manager and then open them with this new image viewer. You'll be presented only the selected images to switch between. This is such an underlooked but so useful feature. As a dude in media work, I regularly have to compare two or more images and this makes it very convenient for me. Overall, the new image viewer feels like a faster, simpler and a more intelligent update to the old image viewer. Apps like the file manager and the settings app here have received a redesign. No, not subtle retouches here and there, but a big change. The file manager has received a full vertical split that separates out the navigation elements panel and the files and folders. Earlier, this split was up until the title bar. But now, the divider line goes up all the way and splits the title bar as well. In the settings app too, it's the same. The setting headings are completely split from the toggles. This is a very interesting change in design. I'm gonna say it's a very bold change as well. But both these apps look surprisingly good. 
There's a modern touch here and the design language feels post-material. I like this very much. It's much cleaner and looks very spectacular. Apart from files and settings, apps like clock, calendar and the text editor have also received polishing touches and look superior now. Fedora 39 finally brings a colored bash prompt. While Fedora did come with a color coded terminal or console, the prompt itself was just white, which definitely made it feel very boring, at least for me. Now you get a color coded prompt. And you can also personalize it to suit to your liking. Hey, I know, it's not the next big thing in the world of Linux and we do have colored prompts on other distros. Fedora made the change and I'm just reporting it. An interesting experiment to understand how important colors are on a screen Take a note of how much daily screen time you do on your smartphone. Then turn on the grayscale mode or the focus mode on. Keep them on all the time. They'll remove the colors from your phone and turn your phone screen into just black and white. Use this for 3 days and you'll notice your phone usage drop down noticeably. See how colors affect your brain. In the about page in settings, there's a new system detail section that gives you more information about the hardware and software of your system. This is a nice touch as the about section is less cluttered now and this new screen gives out ample information about your system. In-depth detail about your computer's processors, GPU and software info such as your OS, the kernel version and GNOME desktop version are also provided here. I like this new screen. Fedora 39 is powered by the all-powerful Linux 6.5. This is the latest kernel at the moment and has some really cool new things. Firstly, read and write speeds for Linux file systems like ext4 and btrfs has been improved with many ingenious code improvements. People using AMD Zen-based computers are set to receive performance boosts with this kernel. There's good news for Intel users as well. Linux 6.5 introduces TPMI technology for Intel processors which is set to improve the processor efficiency. With Linux 6.5, Wi-Fi 7 gets support so that's another step forward. Along with these improvements, many new devices get support and there are also numerous driver updates that bring top-notch support for many devices. Overall, F39 comes powered by a new engine that's better than ever before. Somebody cue the drum roll because we are introducing a brand new spin of Fedora that is Fedora Onyx. Immutable distros are all the hype in 2023. BlendOS, NixOS, VanillaOS are all creating a rage out there. Now Fedora 2 has one of those. Fedora Silverblue is an immutable offering from Fedora. Fedora Onyx is going to be the love child of this Silverblue and Budgie desktop. Yes sir, F39 brings a new option with the sleek and simple Budgie desktop coupled with benefits like immutability, atomic updates and unbreakable solidity of these distros. After noticing that Fedora's modular repositories that is Fedora Repos Modular and Fedora Repos Rawhide Modular are being vastly underutilized, the developers have decided to retire both these repos. While this axing is going to simplify packaging on Fedora for the users, it'll just mean maybe a slightly faster DNF performance. By the way, there were whispers about Fedora 39 shipping with DNF 5 as the new package manager which would bring vast improvements to Fedora's package management, but this is not happening and we'll have to wait till Fedora 41 to see DNF 5 in action. Fedora 39 comes with a refreshed set of packages. You're getting the latest, well-tested versions of everything. Your browser, utilities, system software, programming tools and languages, everything gets updated here. On the development side, GCC 13.2, Golang 1.21 and Python 3.12 are available. LibreOffice is on version 7.6 here and pretty much the whole thing feels fresh and new. I find Fedora's release cycle to be absolutely amazing, a new release every 6 months. This lets Fedora hit that sweet spot between being new and well tested. This is why Fedora is a refreshing experience that's also dependable. Fedora 39 is one of the many incremental updates that have made Fedora what it is today. And what exactly is Fedora today? It's a dynamic computing platform that has evolved. Fedora had always been a distribution for advanced users, your software professionals, tinkerers and hardcore enthusiasts. But Fedora has evolved to be more. Fedora has transformed into a top candidate for a mainstream Linux distribution. Seriously. Fedora today is a serious contender to Ubuntu's throne as the de facto Linux distribution. That quality and user friendliness has grown in Fedora. While Ubuntu is doing some big gambits that are getting mixed reactions from the hardcore Linux community like the snaps, choosing Flutter as the main technology henceforward etc. Fedora on the other hand is 
closer than ever to the heart of the average Linux user. Deep integration with Stognome, out-of-the-box Flatpak support, and its community at the heart of every decision being made. If this doesn't scream community-driven force, I don't know what does. Alright, if you enjoyed our countdown with the all-new F39, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero within the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out this fantastic distro called NixOS. It's unlike anything you have seen yet, so absolutely don't miss that. Alright, this is the next text, signing out. <laughs>